Hello, uh, welcome back to another lecture. We're going to do another uh, wood beam design. This is a roof beam, and this roof beam is subjected to a uh, uh, 14 pound per square foot dead load and a roof life load of 20 pound per square foot. We're going to size this beam with this loading, and then later on I'm going to come back, same beam. We're going to size it for north, which is have a, add some snow load to it, see what we're going to get it for different size. Now, this beam is... Uh, 13 point uh, five feet long just a roof beam and uh, it's uh, uh, simply supported so we're going to go ahead and do the shear moment diagram and you remember from college we're going to figure out this reaction and these two reaction if you remember from a uh, long time ago it's basically uh, we call let's call this R one and two, which they kind of base equal. Um, it's going to be uh, I or R is equal from beam formula, which I'm going to put on a board right there, is WL divided by two, and that's going to come out to, uh, um, uh, but I don't know my W, so let's figure out W. These uh, beams are uh, 16 inch uh, roof beam, uh, they are 16 inch apart. So uh, if you have 16 inch apart, that means your turbulatory width is going to be 16 in inch apart. So you have to convert these to a, a pound per foot. And uh, if you want to know about turbulatory uh, width, you can see one of my uh, previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to add both of those 14 plus 20 and multiply them by uh, turbulatory width, which is a 16 inch divided by 12 meter a foot. And that comes out to uh, 45, 33, 45, 33. So this is a 45.33 pound per foot. Okay. Now we have that. Uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, uh, calculate our uh, sh uh, reaction, and which is a WL divided by two, and that's a 45. 0.33 times 13.5 and divide those by 2 that should come out to uh, 306 pound 306 pound at the same time I'm going to go ahead and calculate this so that's 306 pound I'm going to go up here 306 pound and it's going to come back down like this and it's going to go back up and that's my shear diagram and moment diagram is right here which is a wl square divided by eight and that kind of come out to uh in your room so now we're going to find maximum moment based on same equation so mm max is equal uh wl square divided by eight and that equal uh, forty-five thirty-three, forty-five point three three times thirteen point five, and that's a square. Let's make that to an inch, and divide that by eight, and uh, that comes out to twelve uh, point three nine. That's a kip inch. So I got 12.39 kip inch. All right, now I have got that out of the way. So we find out, based on our loading, which is a dead load and life load, uh, roof life load, our maximum shear is going to be uh, 306 pounds. And then our maximum moment is going to be uh, 12,390 pound per inch, pound inch, not per inch, pound time inch. And this is due to the load. Then we will calculate the stress due to the load and compare it to the stress. Now, when we look at the uh, wood itself, the beam itself, we look at the table 4.31, and there are seven stresses there. Out of those, those seven stresses, we're going to go ahead and uh, 
uh, use uh, four of them, which is the bending stress, shear stress, uh, bearing stress, and then the, uh, uh, using the module for elasticity uh, uh, E prime. And we can go ahead. The one thing about beam is, in a wooden beam is, your bending stress is FBX, but because wood has a special property and it has to be multiplied by a different uh, adjustment factor to make it right. Depend if the wood is combined with other load, then you have to use uh, your CD is different. And that's per table 2.31, which I'm going to show you. And then same, you have, you have a size factor, you have a, a, a bracing factor, then you have uh, uh, incising and all that stuff, and we're going to go through those one by one. Okay, let's calculate FB prime right here first. Uh, we're going to go ahead to uh, table 4A. 4A, we're going to find out from 4A. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at table 4A to find out the value of uh, bending stress here. Now, the bending stress is uh, different. You have to look very, very careful here. You've got to make sure that you find the right species and write commercial grade. And here we're looking for DFL, uh, which is Douglas Fair Large, and we're looking for a number one. And if you look at the table, and uh, that it comes out to, our FABX comes out to 1,000. Okay, so now we're gonna have calculate the other uh, factors, and our CD comes out to 125, and that's based on what I have on a, on a, a board and uh, because of the roof life load combination that makes it 125. And the next one is a CM. CM is a one here. We do not have any issue from being outside. And then we have the CT. And uh, CT, again, it's the, the temperature. It's not going to be an issue with the temperature. So that's becoming one. And then the next one after that we have um, um, CL and CL is the uh, uh, lateral stability and because this is a roof beam and you have the plywood uh, covering and connecting all these roofs so there's no lateral stability, it's not an issue and therefore become one. The next size factor, the size factor is based on the size of the beam, we don't know the size of the beam. Now since we don't know the size of the beam, we're going to guess at it. If you take a look at the table, what I have for size factor, good guess will be 1.2 and then later on we're going to come back adjust that once we have uh, calculated uh, uh, the size factor. Let's use 1.2. And then you have a CR, which is a repetition factor. And repetition factor, again, based on a table, uh, because uh, they, they are uh, um, a lot of beams are next to each other. So we get about 15% uh, additional on that. So that'd be 1.15. I got 1.15. And then CI factor, which is really that if we don't have the issue with that, that's going to be 1. So after calculating all this and multiply all these numbers, and we're going to come out with the uh, 1725 PSI, and that's our bending stress. Now we have our bending stress, we know the bending stress, and we know our maximum uh, moment, we can easily calculate the uh, uh, size, which is a section module, and then we can go back in the table and uh, calculate it. And how we do that, take a look what I have on the table, the required section, so SX comes out to um, Maximum moment divided by F prime B, and that comes out to uh, uh, 12390, uh, and our FAB was 1725, and that number comes out to uh, 7.18. Inch cube. So if I go back in a table, 1B in DS 1B. And we can look at the variety sizes. We want to find something closer to 718. Uh, we're looking for a dimensional number two by two by something. So let's try two by six. And that will give me as uh, x is equal uh, from the table is uh, seven, uh, 756, which is a 756 and that bigger than 718, we okay. So we're going to use this 2x6, and then we're going to come back, see if this 2x6 we have selected, it will work. So next thing we're going to go ahead and do, remember we guessed at the, uh, this uh, CF, uh, CF. Let's, now we know the size, let's go find the exact what CF. Now we're going to go ahead and fi figure out uh, from table uh, 4A, the size factor. The size factor from best end and table, as you can see, comes out to 1.3. 
So our CF comes out to 1.3, and we're going to go ahead and go back and calculate that the same way we have done before with the right adjustment factor. So F prime B is equal, uh, let me write it with something better than that. Yeah, you can see that. It's 1,000 times the same thing, 125, 1, 1, 1, and this time 1.3, and 115, and 1. And our final number uh, comes out to uh, uh, 1870. And that's a 1870 PSI. So now we have found the stress in a wood based on a condition, that species of wood, our stress is 1870 PSI. Let's find out how much stress this load will cause. And hopefully the stress that this load will cause is less than that and we'll be okay. We already know the maximum moment. So we know the stress is equal. Uh, FB is equal M divided by S. And our M came out to be uh, uh, 12,390 pound inch. And our... Uh, S is uh, for this species came for this size came out to 75, 7.56, and therefore now we're gonna have that divided by that number comes out to uh, 1640 psi, which is less than 1870 and we check out, we're good. So here is the deal, when we design a beam, we check it against four different things. First and most important is the bending. And then we're gonna check against the shear, then we're gonna check against the uh, bearing, how much this bearing require, uh, the two by has to lean on, and then the finally we're going to check against deflection. What is your deflection that you're going to allow? And if it passes all those criteria, then we're good. So now first criteria, pass. We check the bending. Let's go check for shear. And from the table uh, 4.31, our uh, shear stress, which is F prime V, that comes out to uh, F uh, V, and that's going to be multiplied by uh, CD, CM, CT and CI. So, and from table 4A, we know FAV comes out to uh, 180. So that's equal 180 times uh, 125 and time 1, 1, 1, and that comes out to uh, um, 225. 225 PSI. So now that's our shear, but our shear uh, forces came out to 306 pound here. So let's calculate our shear stress. And the formula for the shear stress, which I have it on the board, that says F of V, and that's equal 1.5 V divided by A, and that is equal 1.5, uh, 306 pound. And the area is a two by six, which is two by six area comes out to inch and a half by five and a half, which is 825. Inch and a half by 5.5. Let's see that comes out to a correct number. Okay, and that comes out to 55.6. Okay, so this is comes out to 55.26 PSI, which is less than this right here, 225. So the share checked out, it's pretty good. The bending wasn't too far, it was, it was pretty good, I checked out too. So the next thing we're going to check out is the uh, bearing. See, the next thing we're going to uh, check is the bearing stress. Uh, the bearing stress is basically, if you have, uh, this is a 2x8, 2x10 actually. 
So how much area you need for this end of the beam to rest on? And that's why we want to find out how much length I need from here to here for this beam to rest on. That's very important. So now we're going to go ahead and um, look at the same table, 4.31. And we have a compression stress uh, para, uh, perpendicular to the grain. Then time this factor, which is basically uh, the all one. And from the table 4a, we're going to find out that is come out to uh, um, 625. So that's equal uh, 625 times 1 times 1, which is basically come out to 625 psi. Now we have that. And uh, the next. The next thing we're going to go ahead, we're going to calculate the uh, required area. And the required area is given by this formula, which is uh, A is equal our reaction divided by uh, uh, F prime and uh, from compression, which is our reaction came out to be uh, 306, 306 and divide that by a 625. That comes out to uh, almost a half inch square. Okay, so that's our area right here. That's the area, that's a two by six, which is one inch and a half by 5.5, and that's your two by six. And uh, we want to know how long it is going the other way. And the required length is going to be, bearing length is going to be the area divided by the B. And that is equal 0.49 inch square. And the B was uh, inch and a half right there. So that number comes out to uh, 0.33 inch. That means you need that much little bit so the beam can rest on. Okay, so that is uh, something that you, when you build it, you can uh, adjust that. So next looks for the deflection. So now we're going to calculate the deflection, and the deflection comes out 5WL4 divided by 384 e, uh, e prime i. But we have to fix, uh, first find out what E prime is. So I'm going to go ahead right here and make a line so I can find E prime. Oh, I don't want to go that far down. Our E prime comes out to uh, uh, from the chart uh, 4.31. E prime is equal uh, E time uh, uh, CMCTCI, which they all want anyway, and that comes out to uh, um, one million seven hundred thousand psi. And if I come and plug that number right here. I'm going to have 5 times W. Now here it is the thing. You can go ahead and calculate the total deflection. You can go ahead and calculate the deflection just for life load and then say compare it to uh, uh, your design criteria which is L over, three, L over 240. And you can do a total deflection which will be L over uh, 180 and see if you're going to make it. Or it's up to you. You might want to have uh, L over 360. If you want an uh, area uh, like a western part of the country, then you want to go even high, you know, L over higher number, which is like 360 or, uh, or even more. Some places go L over 1,000. Anyway, so now go ahead and calculate this, and that comes out to a based on a W life load, which was 20 times, uh, convert that. If we converted that, we did. 16 divided by 12, just to convert the load. This is the load itself, life load, load. and uh, time L, and L was 13.5 uh, by power 4, and let's convert that to an inch, and that, if we can do that, that'd be uh, 1728 inch cube per cubic feet. So now we have that, and we divide that by uh, 384 times 1,700,000 uh, psi, and then time i, and i is from the table uh, for b, i comes out to be uh, 20.8. 20.8, so my deflection comes out to, for life load, comes out to become uh, almost half inch. And if I want to compare that to uh, 
L over 240 and uh, see if it's less than L over 240. So if L over 240 and L is uh, 13.5 times 12 divided by 240, that comes out to uh, Point six seven. Okay, so this number is less than that number. So uh, point five six is less than point six seven. It's okay. Again, if you never feel comfortable, you have a deflection issue. All you have to do go use it uh, uh, two by ten.